Hello, Cleric again. Uh, as promised, this is the fabled video on the mouse and keyboard controls in Armored Core 6. Now, I realize that this is a long time coming. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I kind of lacked the ability to do it before. I have it now. It should be inside the balance of the NDA as far as not really showing anything else off. I'm really just showing you a mouse and keyboard controls inside the uh, training area, all stuff that's seen them before, so it shouldn't be a problem. That being said, this is going to be a much bigger discussion. Uh, I realized as I was preparing this video that there's actually a whole lot more to talk about than just mouse and keyboard controls because it has to do a lot to do with the fact that reticle movement has completely changed in Armored Core 6. This is what I mean. Turning speed or turning ability in this game has been a long time stat that has affected an Armored Core's ability to essentially turn or move their AC certain directions. Uh, it didn't, movement speed always just affected your general speed, but specifically turning speed or turning ability affected how well fast you could turn your camera reticle. Uh, that stat no longer exists in Armored Core 6. It's completely gone. That's a pretty big departure. I would admit I was a little, so I would say jarred at first too, because that's a new experience for me, having played all the previous games multiple times. Uh, but after playing it for a little bit, I gotta tell you, I really think it's a welcome change and I'll explain after I do the demo later. So with that being said, since turning speed is gone, that means there's now a determiner, determ determiner, yeah, I, I think it's the right word, uh, as far as how your reticle now moves in the game. For mouse and keyboard, it is literally just as sensitive as your mouse is. Whatever your mouse sensitivity is and what it's doing or moving to, that is how fast your your little your aiming reticle your, 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 is on the screen is going to move around you. So that's a pretty uh, nice thing for FPS players. Now, I'd be like, well, this is not an FPS, this is an armor core. You are correct. It's not going to be a one-to-one -one FPS. Although, for some monster out there who decides to, t to install the... Uh, the manual aiming OS tuning part, which by the way, completely removes lock on entirely. Uh, all it does is let you just free aim and shoot. And you know what? If you're some crazy, ridiculous person who can pull off like 360 known scope nonsense, like you see in like Call of Duty or, or Counter-Strike or something, you know what? More power to you. <laughs> uh, but in this game, the mouse movement is what dictates uh, where your mouse ends up. Now, it doesn't automatically turn your AC. It does depend on what you're currently doing, whether you're boosting, uh, if you're currently aiming at someone, all those that kind of affects what you're actually turning is, as far as the actual turning of your physical AC. Uh, but as far as what's on the screen, it is based on your mouse movement. Now, you might say, well, if turning speed is gone, what about for for uh, Xbox or you know PS5 controller? Well, it's determined by the camera speed stat. So when you go into the you know, it's not stat, it's just an option. When you go to the system options and you go to camera, there is a camera speed. And essentially the higher that is, the faster you turn. It's all demonstrated in the video. In fact, you know, let's go and get to that now so you can kind of see what that looks like. All right, so here's me uh, right here doing this with the mouse and keyboard controls. I actually adjust the camera here in a minute because I realize it's not really getting very much. Uh, here I am moving around. You may notice as my, 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 I move my mouse, I move back and forth. I have my sensitivity turn pretty far up. That's kind of how I've always played. Uh, I, I don't. Do, I know I really should do the big arm movements. They say it's better for your wrist and stuff. But so far I've been okay. Uh, if I need, that needs to change, it needs to change. Uh, but as of right now, you can see as I move around and the game is being played, it's actually you know, here's me moving the camera because I realized it was a really horrible spot. I think it actually might have fallen down. Uh, you see me kind of dictating things here. So. At some point here pretty soon, you're going to see me uh, do some different movements here. And the main thing I'm going to do is let you see how I uh, move the camera back while still in motion, how it keeps my AC turned the wrong way if I move it too fast in the middle of moving. So that will that does get affected by these things. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm showing you firing while already aiming that way and then turning around and firing, how there's a slight delay. So that actually does affect your, your, your uh, reticle correction. As far as keeping up, and here's me assault boosting and showing even though you have super fast mouse movement, your assault boost and turning is still limited as far as that works. Um, so there's a lot of things here. So I, I turned some enemies on just to kind of give a feel for what moving around really quickly kind of feels like on mouse and keyboard. You can kind of see my, uh, my mouse movement a little bit here, the subtle movements I make to go around and I play. Like I said, if you've played any kind of first person shooter or used to it, mouse and keyboard aiming controls at all, this, this game will very much feel at home. I really enjoy having all the firing buttons on the different mouse buttons on the right hand and all the different function options on my left hand. Uh, at the end here, I'll show you what my key bindings are at the end of this video. Uh, 
but, but in all reality, just look at this movement. It seems, it's, it feels natural. When I went to the game and I first tried mouse and keyboard, I really thought, you know, this is an odd sensation, but having never used mouse and keyboard for armor court at any point, but I gotta tell you, within about five, 10 minutes, I was used to it. And after I got used to it and went back to controller for a little bit, I, I kind of, honestly, I kind of hated it. I can still play pretty well on the controller, but I found myself just craving to go back to the mouse and keyboard setup because I got so used to it so fast. So here I am switching to keep to controller. So what I do is I show in the system settings, go into camera. And what I wanted to show here is, okay, I didn't realize I went the wrong direction first. Okay. I, I guess I use inverted from aiming flight controls. Can't help it. I have the camera speed turned all the way up. So here I am on the right right stick, and how, look how fast you can turn even on the or on the analog sticks. It's pretty fast. So then I go back in, and I turn that camera setting really far down to kind of show you the, the, the difference making is here. Turn all the way down to two, and now it is really slow. Now I can tell you that doesn't matter if you're hard locked or aim assist. If you're aim assisted on someone, it'll turn it for you. But if you are on soft lock. Or if you're one of those one of those crazy people doing manual aim, uh, it yeah it it's completely affected by the, that camera setting. So that is the single biggest uh, adjustment I will say, as far as the aiming reticle and movement goes in this game. It is a pretty big departure from the previous in the series, but in all honesty, it's uh, I, I I feel like it fits in pretty well and it's a pretty welcome change. L let me explain why. This is what I meant by this end of turning into a bigger discussion. There's been a lot of talk from a lot of different people, a lot of different comments about how this works in terms of skill expression. Uh, the, the conversation has kind of been evolving and devolving over time in different places. And I, I saw quite a bit of comments about how they're worried about the turning speed and how that's going to affect skill expression. And honestly, I feel like that's a little bit of a misconception in these games. And I feel like it's kind of always been a misconception in these games. Look, take it from someone who has ma been maining heavy bipeds since Armor Core 3. <laughs> Uh, turning speed has been a big part of my detriment from the very beginning. Uh, there used to be an optional part in the games uh, called it, which would improve turning speed. And let me tell you, as a heavy biped player, that optional part was not optional. It was completely mandatory. Uh, I was dead in the water, essentially, if I didn't have that optional part turned on. Even the lightest of the heavy biped legs, it was very detrimental. And I often didn't use the lightest heavy biped legs because I used the heavier ones because I wanted the big weapons, which is why I wanted to do those things. So yeah, I, I felt that turning speed was often, and what I felt, I'll call it an arbitrary stat, and it is, it's, an, it's a number. Essentially how fast you can move was, was dictated by that turning speed number. And I was having to keep up with super lightweights with Oppai zipping around like crazy. And I basically took everything I had to keep them inside my aiming reticle, my, my aiming reticle, even to be able to shoot at them in the first place. And that was unpleasant to say the least in most cases. Uh, many people would I often hear from people, well, you should just use a, a lighter build. Th then why bother having the heavier legs in the game at all? Why bother? Why have the tank legs? Why have the heavy reverse joints? Why have the heavy bipeds? Why have the heavier things whatsoever? If you're if the only form of skill expression in this game is to go super fast and stay behind your opponent Then why bother even having the other leg types as an option? Why only zippy boys are considered skillful and beefy boys aren't considered skillful? Uh, which I think by the way is ridiculous uh, Being bigger is a completely different set of skills uh, the, the ability to twitch dodge to pick your engagements you know, placing your uh, heavier weapon shots in the right timing all those things mattered especially on the heavier ACs and let me tell you Zealous is a monster with the GNL-15 or the classic grenade launcher. And I can tell you that guy was one of the best people I've ever seen use that weapon. And if you ask him, he'll probably tell you, even on my big old heavy biped and his, his quad running around doing slide boosting and slide jumping, I probably dodged his grenade launcher shot more than anyone else he knows. Because I learned how to adapt and basically twitch dodge the thing and keep it, it's aiming off, and so it, it wouldn't track me as well. Now, sometimes he catch on to me, and sometimes I catch on to him, but it was a form of skill. It was a way of paying attention to your surroundings on your heavier, slower moving machine to keep things moving. So, I think a lot of this is a misconception on what is considered skill in Armored Core. Now, that's not to say 
like I said earlier, being faster and keeping yourself in your po opponent's blind spot, feathering or keep, pay, maintaining your energy gauge correctly doesn't take some skill. It definitely does. But just because you are faster than the person in front of you and they have a stat that's basically limiting their ability to keep track of you, it doesn't automatically make you more skillful. It just makes you faster than the other player. Speed does not necessarily equate skill. It can, but it's not necessarily the case. And I feel like this game is essentially addressing that problem. The biggest issue you saw in a lot of previous PvP sessions, especially a lot of different games, not to say heavies were always useless, they weren't. It often depended on what weapons were good in what game. It often depended on what arenas you played in. But in all reality, I, I play in enough different tournaments and different matches where I can tell you it was a rather frustrating experience sometime as the big bulky guy trying to keep up with the thing that essentially can fly around and zip around for forever, where they literally get me down by a couple hundred AP then they run away the rest of the time. Now, people might say that, well, that's them using their advantage. Yeah, you're absolutely correct, which if you're in that position, you should do that because you should take your advantage because engaging me in a firefight is stupid, uh, but so is... The idea that I should never be able to fire each at all is also kind of ridiculous in this game. So I feel like people need to kind of ease up a little bit on the turning speed or reticle movement as a removal of skill in this game. I think what the game is trying to go for is you're trying to, you have to pick your engagements. You have to gauge your range. You have to gauge what staggers currently at. You have to gauge your energy. You have to gauge what, you, gauge what your opponent's currently using and their positioning. There's going to be a lot of tactical survivability in this game that's I think is really going to win out in the end as far as who comes out on top in a lot of PvP. Now, in the lower ranks, could it devolve the firefights? Of course. Could it devolve into someone just getting a slight AP lead and running away the whole time? Of course. Uh, but I think there's going to be a whole lot less of that in this game versus the previous games. Now, I could end up being wrong, and if I end up being wrong, I'll admit I'm wrong. I have no problem admitting I'm wrong. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I, I think people are going to see probably some of the most variety in competitive build types that Armor Core may have ever seen. Now, I know it's a bold prediction, and it may not come true. But honestly, it may come true anyways, because From already said, they're going to be watching the part usage and part performance very closely and putting out regulation balance patches as necessary to make adjustments to things they think need adjusted. So, that's it. That's the whole opinion. That's what I think about mouse and keyboard controls. Oh, you know what I just realized? I did not show you the mapping on it. Let me go back to that, please. That's my fault. Oh, no. Uh, it won't let me change it on OBS. It won't let me move it forward. Well, here we go. Now I got it. Man, it's being weird. All right, let's skip ahead a little bit here. So you go down to input device settings and go to key bindings. I leave the uh, general controls alone as a whole. Uh, middle mouse button is your target or hard lock. I end up swapping left and right click because I'm so used to left click being main weapon and right click being off weapon. I use a lot of blades, so that's kind of I'm used to. I put four and five on my mouse on my right side. I swap shift control and repair because repair and R just kind of makes more sense to me. Plus I press repair on accident less often that way. And let me tell you, so let me go back just a little bit here. So with these base controls, so you notice right there that you see jump ascend, uh, is, sorry, not jump ascend, quick boost is on shift. Uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, turn off sticky, tea, stick, excuse me, sticky key controls on Windows. <laughs> uh, something to me, I'm glad there wasn't a camera on me uh, during the PvP event because there was a few times during that where I accidentally uh, pressed shift too many times and it went to sticky keys, completely got out of the game, said, you want to turn sticky keys on? And I had to, no, 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 and click out of it real fast and go back into the game where I was sitting there essentially for five to 10 seconds as a complete sitting duck. So as a tip to mouse and keyboard players, uh, turn off sticky keys so that doesn't happen on accident uh, or else you end up losing things you don't, you didn't plan on losing. All right. So if you like the video, uh, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments, if you think I'm a complete moron, feel free to comment. I'll be honest with you, if you're going to be vitriolic, I'm just going to ignore you anyways. And there's a membership now. It'll be a member. Feel free. And I will see you in the next video.